Hello, my name is Omar Ampersad. It's Monday, March 25th, 2019 at 2.18 uh, p.m. in Toronto. So I'm going to give you today's sample of my being illegally, illegally surveilled. So that's the tagging of my hand. The other one. My jaw. See the reading cycle through from zero to that was five hundred plus No, I don't have any magnets on my chest or my back. It's over a thousand, so I'm in pain. Eleven hundred. So I'm in pain. So let's show you what it looks like in the other detector. The jaw. The air. And I have a headache right now. The temple. Now again, if it's um, general radiation in the vicinity of my body, this would be going off anywhere. Like this would be going off behind me, above me. But it's not. It's going off when I point it towards my body. So I'll demonstrate one more time um, how that works on a cell phone. So the cell phone very quickly because I did this before um, just to give you a reference point of how the um, how the signals work it's trying to bring up a video here so it's downloading video is playing. So if I move the detector away from the cell phone, there is no signal. All right. That's the, towards the camera. That's the uh, general area, no signal. But when I put it near the phone, there's the readings. Now you notice it went up over a thousand. And this would explain why when I hold my phone up to my ear, it hurts. Even my jaw hurts. Okay, so the other one, the video is playing then it downloads and it plays and it downloads some more so again if I were to hold this around my body like around my body back on top no no alarm but as soon as I hold it to the cell phone, you get an alarm. So the same idea, the same idea, 
just let me take off my cell phone here. The same idea with my body. All right, I hold it around my body, nothing. But I point it towards my body in certain spots and you get an alarm. No alarm, no alarm. Alarm. On and off, it's an, a pulsed system. And the power goes up and down as well because you can tell that the, um, the red light is brighter in certain spots and, uh, and dimmer. And it goes up and down, bright, bright to dim. So the power is going up and down, as well as being pulsed. Okay, so I'm in pain. And I'll demonstrate the pain with my blood pressure reading. While I'm waiting, you'll see the reading go up and down as the power goes up and down. There is a reading of 500 to zero. I think I saw uh, 1100 go by there. their hurts and you'll see the high readings over a thousand so the pressure is 122 over 90 which is high for me and uh, the heart rate in a sitting position and I've been sitting for a bit, 102. So the heart rate increased. So I'm gonna take the pressure afterwards, um, after I do my uh, little blurb. So today, I um, wanna to talk about piercing the veil of secrecy. And by that I mean talking about the elephant in the room. So piercing the veil of, of, uh, for, um, of uh, secrecy means that you talk about things that you're not supposed to talk about as a social um, group. Uh, and uh, the community targeting program is such, um, such a topic. Everybody knows, but nobody talks about it. And if you do, you will be persecuted by everyone who's taken part in it. And that doesn't necessar necessarily mean that every single person has taken part in it, but a lot of people do. So, and they will come after you because these are the people who are benefiting from the secrecy. There is also another saying that, uh, that uh, um, goes something like this, uh, evil grows in dark places, meaning if you shine a light in the dark places, the evil does not get to grow. So um, the veil of secrecy 
allows the darkness. So it allowed the darkness allows the evil to grow. So this is uh, the reason I'm speaking out. Uh, in spite of everything that uh, I was put through to discourage me from talking. And I've been through a lot, health-wise, um, financially, um, relationships, loss of family members. So th there's been, um, you know, quite a few um, emotional um, obstacles placed in my way, setbacks, emotional setbacks. And, and these, uh, these incidents are, are meant to intimidate and to shut me down, to stop me from talking, but I refuse to. So um, I'm going to talk about one incident in one company without calling specific names in the company. Um, and uh, what happened in that company in 10 days, 10 days, and how it relates right back to what I'm suspecting is the sex slave operation, a slave operation, not only a sex slave operation, it's just um, a conspiracy to enslave. Supposedly people who are put on a list, but um, I'm suspecting that there's a whole lot of names that's not on the list. And um, a lot of people are affected this way, and these names are not on the list. So um, I think it's a bamboozle. I think, uh, I think people are bamboozled when they are told that only the names on the list are being affected when this is not true. So um, in this one incident, in this one company, I, uh, I had gotten a job in another company after uh, answering um, sending out resumes and answering the, um, the, um, the emails that came in response to my, my sending the resumes out. And uh, I interviewed and I got, uh, um, I got an offer and I accepted it. And then while I was working, um, I got a second email from another person I interviewed with, um, you know, asking me to take the job basically. And um, I thought nothing about it, but the first job did not work out. So when I was let go from that job, again, after a short period of time, which was another conversation, um, I called this person up and, um, and I interviewed a second time and I got, I got an offer and I accepted the job. Um, while I was there, um, the, uh, the owner would bring his young sons in. He did so several times. Um, and I was introduced to his sons and, um, you know, a couple of times, not very few. I mean, I was there for 10 days. So uh, a few times uh, I, I was in the kitchen getting coffee and I'd say hello to them and uh, maybe a few more words. But other than that, I had no contact with his kids. Um, then I heard, uh, well, let's, let's finish uh, the 10 days at the, the company. Then I started um, noticing the same pattern being played out in the company as the previous one. So uh, uh, I had the distinct impression that I was being monitored and uh, the same information that was in the previous company was in this company. And uh, there's some sort of monitoring going on. Because, um, you know, I, you, you know, uh, I mean, a person would know if they're being, um, if more attention is being paid to you than normal. Uh, certain comments would be made, certain actions would be made. Um, and certain whispering, uh, certain comments would be said whispering behind your back while whispering behind your back with other um, employees. So after 10 days, um, I was fired basically for not being a fit. And after that happened, um, 
uh, w um, through the conversations held outside the window as part of the ongoing targeting that I'm experiencing in the building, I heard that uh, this person flagged me, that he continued the process of flagging, which meant that before he hired me, he knew there was a, a flagging process, which was part and is part of the targeting program. So he knew I was a target. And based on the comments that I heard in that company, um, the information um, that was contained in reports that's made about me as part of the targeting program was released to that employer and the employees that I worked with. So I was being harassed there based on these comments, uh, based on this report by nasty comments and so on and whisperings uh, behind my back. So then, uh, as I said, I heard outside the window from um, mainly Chinese uh, patrons who are working, I suspect, with the, the traffickers, um, that uh, there was another flag from this company. And he had gotten, the employer had gotten the contract to surveil, and he was determining who the next um, remote viewer would be, the next remote John, basically. He would be selling remotely because he would be contracting out the surveillance. Now, whether it's true or not, whether it's, um, whether it's the employer who's doing it or somebody employed by him who had the contract and who called the cops made a report about me and had me flagged to continue the surveillance so that the contract could be gotten and the surveillance and the monitoring um, contracted out, which was a cover really for remote, for remote um, um, uh, viewing, voyeurism and, and rape, basically. It's a gerbil, but this is what gerbling is all about. Um, pulsing between your legs with remote technologies. So this is really, a, this is what the cover, this is um, what this whole thing is covering, this program is covering. So um, this is what happened in that company. Uh, and I heard comments about my being, um, my talking to the kids and, um, and uh, oh my God, I could be a pedophile. And this is uh, something that, I absolutely love kids. And this is just another rumor being spread about me that sexualizes me, number one. Number two, paints me as some sort of a deviant, somebody who has to be monitored, piggybacking on other reports that sexualizing me because that whole idea is to sell. And you can sell, only sell a person who's sexualized because you have to grow the demand for the person. So none of this is true. If this person said things about uh, my picking up his sons, um, the most, the, 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 I mean, his kids are, um, are uh, the, the kids, you know. Uh, if I said hello and hi, I tried to make conversation, that's what I do with kids. Um, it, you, you go down to their level and you make conversations with them. Um, if, if they say hello to you, and in a lot of cases, the kids would actually talk to me. So um, it would be rude not to have, not to continue um, the conversation if the child tries to have a conversation with you. Um, so there was none of this, um, this, uh, this uh, painting of, of, of pedophilia. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely none of it. None whatsoever. It's very possible that uh, it was piggybacking on a report I heard that my sister-in-law said that I was trying to pick up um, her grandkids, that I was, um, that I was uh, somehow um, uh, behaving inappropriately towards the kids, the, the grandchild, my nephew's children. Um, this is yet another lie. I babysat. Uh, my niece and nephew. Um, there was absolutely no concern before now, before the rumors that's being spread now. 
and it's just it just does not fall in my personality within my personality profile these lies uh, are so um are so um far-fetched when my personality profile is really analyzed that they're obvious lies to anybody who, um, who who takes the time to look at it even you know just a little closely a little more closely than just the rumor so this is the kind of the, uh, the the type of rumors that's being spread and lies being spread about me to defame me to degrade me and to enslave me because these rumors, what uh, the the, um, the consequence of these rumors being spread, is people look down upon you. They treat you differently. Uh, you're isolated because now you're um, you're this uh, this uh, pariah in the society that people are supposed to avoid and people are supposed to be careful of uh, being around. This is this is what is the goal of the targeting program. I absolutely adore kids and uh, um, you know it, it just and, and it shows in my interaction with them however the perpetrators will twist that around and say oh my god she's trying to pick up the kid and this is just what's what's done it this is this is uh, this is um, what they're looking for is they're looking for any situation that they can twist and paint in a way that will make the person, the target, looks look criminal. This is all part of the enslavement program. It enslaves you because it degrades you. And then another uh, another step in this uh, targeting program is once you're degraded, once a report is submitted about you that degrades you further, then the price I heard because there's a trading program going on based on this. Uh, on the names on the list, there are other people on the list that this is being done to. There's a trading, so your price, the price for you goes down and the next person in line who gets a turn to degrade you pays less for you. It's a slave program. It's a, slave, a slavery ring that's been run under the cover of flagging. And I ran out of time, so I'm not gonna be able to take my pressure. Um, it went over 20 minutes, so I'm going to have to cut this video sh short here. Talk to you another time.